Chinese state media reporting authorities have removed the head of its Securities Regulatory Commission. The new regulator, Wu Qing, is a banking veteran who earned the reputation as the broker butcher when he led a crackdown on traders in the mid-2000s. That change comes amid a sharp sell-off in the nation's stock markets. The United States and China held their third meeting of the Economic Working Group this week in Beijing to talk about economic challenges facing both countries. Our next guest says that the U.S. needs to figure out what exactly it wants from China economically. Joining us right now is uh, the Council on Foreign Relations President, Michael Froman. Of course, he's also a former U.S. trade representative. And, Michael, thanks for coming in today. Thanks for having me. Um, you're probably right. I, I don't know that we know entirely what we want from China. I'm not sure China knows what it wants from us either. Look, I think that's right. In the short run, I think both countries just want a stable relationship. They want to get through this year, getting past the Taiwan elections, getting past our elections without any major blowups. I think the question is, over time, when we get past this year, what is it that we want to try and resolve? Right now, it's good that they're talking, they're having dialogue, but it's not going to really resolve any of the underlying, it's unlikely to resolve any of the underlying issues, including China's building overcapacity in critical sectors like uh, electric vehicles. And not just building overcapacity. I mean, I think there are a lot deeper issues that, that come and us reassessing our relationship post-COVID, too. There were all kinds of trade wars that were already taking place before. Then you add on this idea that we suddenly realized we were a little too reliant in our supply chain on right. China. Even if we say we're not decoupling, we're actively pulling back. And it's not just the United States. It's all of these multinational companies, many of them based in the United States, that are looking and saying, we need to diversify. What, what kind of pressure does that put on the relationship as well? Well, I think there is that effort. It's good risk management to be diversifying your, your supply chains. No very one good risk wants management, to be. but how do the Chinese see it? Well, the Chinese aren't happy about it. They're trying to get U.S. companies and other multinational companies to come back into China. On the other hand, they're sending quite schizophrenic messages. On one hand, they're saying, please come back. We need the investment. On the other hand, they're detaining foreign, exe uh, foreign executives. They're uh, raiding offices. And a lot of businesses are very concerned about whether they can continue to do business, Michael, whether it's if, investable. If, when, when we heard President Xi said, and we've had some obviously issues recently with China, but when he said, Listen, guys uh, and gals, it, the world is a really big place, and there's enough room for more than one superpower. And we really aren't harboring any ill intent towards the, the United States. And we're, we can both coexist going decades into the future, and, and kumbaya, and we'll sell to each other, and our consumers will, will both benefit. Can we believe, is, is that true? Do you think there's some version of that, 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 that that's true, or should we just really... Have a, have a much more take off the rose colored glasses and, and know that China would like to, to supplant us as, as the leader. I don't think we should have rose colored glasses on. I do think President Xi has been quite explicit. He wants to dominate certain key technologies, certain key sectors, and it's important for us to maintain the competitiveness uh, in, the, in those sectors. But is it a healthy, nice you. competitiveness where both can benefit, or, 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 or do they? COVID. They closed down flights within their own country, allowed flights out, out of the. Was that. Intentional was that really as devious as, as it seems? Or not? Well, I, I'm not sure. I, I would comment on their deviousness. I would just say uh, what we've seen in COVID is actually the weaknesses of an autocracy. Right. They aren't able to make good decisions under, under pressure. Michael, let me ask you a, a potentially delicate and very political question, which is: In China, President Xi, you think he would prefer, as he looks at this presidential election and what's going to happen next year? So it may be that this year he doesn't want to do anything. But they are watching this election in the U.S. very carefully. What do you think their preference or his preference would be for who the next president is? And is his preference, whatever it is, uh, a good thing for America, for, for, for America, or does that mean it's bad for America? And how should we think about that? Well, look, let me, let me answer it this way. I, when we talk to allies and partners around the world, but also our adversaries and our competitors, they're concerned about two things in the United States. One is the rise of isolationism. And we right. see that it's not about any particular candidate. It's across the American people. There is a theme of, anti, of, anti, of isolationism out there. And the other is our political dysfunctionality. Right. And I think they would be very happy if we were more isolationist and more dysfunctional in our politics because it gives them more runway to expand and to expand their power. Well, well then they're what, happy. What so what, so which, 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 which candidate well. is it? Are you, are you suggesting, you're saying that, that, that Trump is more isolationist? Well, more I, dysfunctional? Is that, that, and you think they would like that? 
I th Chinese officials over time have told me they would be very happy to have a President Trump in office because they think that it would create tension with our allies and we would be focused inward um, and that that would give them more room to. But I think both Trump and uh, Biden have pursued quite similar policies in terms of right. standing up to But here's, to, here's to the China. thing that I can't understand, which is there, there's the argument that Republicans have made is that we've now had a number of true geopolitical uh, problems emerge on Biden's watch. Whether they're idiosyncratic and have anything to do with Biden or not, we can debate, but there's a, it, there's a view that's been put out there that maybe there's a power vacuum or something else. And, um, you know, we saw what happened in Israel and uh, Putin's taken advantage of, of Ukraine, things like that. Do you think that that's the same case, meaning if, if we put this year aside on the Taiwan issue and put Taiwan back on the table in 25, what president of the United States keeps China in a box and which president doesn't? Well, or do they both or look, do they or do neither? Like I, I have uh, faith that the, the U.S. will pursue the strongest policy vis-a-vis -vis China, regardless of who's in uh, who, who's in the office. Do there. you? Uh, you have faith that it's exactly the same? No, it's not, 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 not the same. But I think what President Biden has done is strengthen alliances. Certainly, NATO is much stronger. If you look at the Asia Pacific, what's happened with AUKUS, the, the uh, alliance with Australia and, and the U.K., uh, the trilateral agreements with South Korea and Japan, the Quad that brings India into the Indo-Pacific right. into a security arrangement. I think those are all important contributions that this administration's made to strengthening security across the region and standing up to China. I think those are very important innovations. NATO should pay more, though. They should. They should. Some countries have finally stood up to the 2% the of GDP that they're supposed to spend on defense, and there's a, a longer right. way to go.